Thank you, guys. Uh, and Cloudera would like to thank O'Reilly for the incredible work that they do on this event. Good morning to all of you, and welcome to Strata Hadoop 2015. This is the seventh year that there's been a Hadoop World Conference in New York City at this time of year. The fourth time that we've done this with O'Reilly, that we combine the Strata Conference and the Hadoop World Conference into one bigger and I think much better event. It's our second time to be at the Javits. The venue looks fantastic. And as usual, this year is the biggest ever. We've got more people from more countries in attendance than we've ever had before. Thrilled about that, and I often like to drop a stat or two to say gee whiz. This year's gee whiz stat, though, I'm going to open the aperture a little bit. In the past 12 months, 13,500 people have attended Strata Hadoop World. Here in New York today, for sure, but also in San Jose in Barcelona, in London. In a month, we're taking the conference for the first time ever to Asia. Strata Hadoop World in Singapore will be in early December. It's great to see the spread of big data technology, and it's great to see the global interest in this platform. I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the event today. You've got fantastic content all day long. I want to begin the day by setting a few uh, tones and ideas that I hope you'll carry through the day with you. Two years ago, I'm, I'm sorry, last year when I stood on this stage, I made a prediction. I predicted that Hadoop was going to disappear. What I meant by that was that applications and solutions on top of the platform would assume the real importance in the ecosystem. We, we wouldn't be talking anymore about Scoop and Uzi and Yarn and so on. We'd be talking about business problems that got solved for real in the real world. I'm pleased to say that in the last year, we've absolutely seen that happen. And I want to tell you a few stories that, exhibit, that, that exemplify how that's happening. Regulators today are paying more attention than ever before to the financial services markets. Banks are held responsible for the actions of their employees. Regulators impose fines, so there is financial risk to a bank that doesn't police its people. There's legal risk as well, and there's real reputational risk. If there is money laundering going on in the network, that redounds upon the bank. That shows up on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Banks have for a long time surveilled trades, watched what their people are doing, who they're trading with, but that wasn't enough information to understand what's going on in detail. Digital Reasoning builds a platform called Synthesis that runs on top of the big data ecosystem built on Hadoop. Synthesis uses natural language processing and machine learning technology against content like text messages and chats and emails and documents. Examines the topics that people are discussing, flags those that may be of some concern. That intelligence can be combined now with the trade surveillance to do a much better job of finding bad behavior and intervening and presenting to avoid as much as $64 billion in regulatory penalties imposed on financial services players. A fantastic advance for that industry. In healthcare, we're seeing similar advances in the state of the art and similar powerful new solutions come into existence. There's a standard called Health Level 7. That's the way that hospitals, insurance companies, share information with one another about patients and about the treatments that they're delivering. Electronic medical records are a powerful enabler of better health care delivery, but in order to work with them, the data has to flow smoothly among all of these organizations. Ingesting data from hospitals, from testing facilities and elsewhere is absolutely critical. As stuff streams in, we want to capture it live. We want to use techniques like, again, machine learning and natural language processing to understand what's in those reports. We want to use configurable matching. Are these two procedures 
kind of the same, even though they've got different procedural codes? Is this patient the same patient when he or she shows up at two different facilities? And we need to be able to publish what we learn to the various stakeholders in the ecosystem. Managing electronic medical records is important in delivering that better care. Big data platforms built on Apache Hadoop make that possible. But the users aren't focusing on Hadoop. The users are focusing on healthcare. The third example I'd like to highlight for you is one from cybersecurity. When you and I walk into our job in the morning, we don't power on the company-issued desktop that's sitting on our desk and get to work. We show up and we whip out the laptop that the company gave us. By the way, that laptop goes on vacation with us and comes home every single night. We pull out our personal mobile phone or our tablet that we use to do our jobs as well. All of those devices, all of those endpoints are a vast expansion in the attack surface on the enterprise. Much easier for bad actors, bad code and bad people outside the organization, even dangerous insiders to misuse those devices to violate security. The Sentinel product from Counterattack uses big data technology to monitor, manage, spot bad behavior in real time. These forensic analyses used to take months, in some cases as long as 300 days, to spot an intrusion. Using Sentinel, Counterattack is able to do that in just minutes, securing the platform better. Again, these are solutions used by business users who've no idea that Hadoop is under the covers. This is enabled, of course, by the emergence of new technologies in the ecosystem like Apache Spark. Now, I stood on this stage in 2013 and boldly predicted that Spark was going to supplant MapReduce as the general purpose analytic engine in the Hadoop ecosystem. Cloudera decided to make a big forward bet then. I think that's paid off. Much of the industry now ships and supports Spark. We're very pleased with the adoption we're seeing in our customer base. More than 200 enterprise customers rolling out meaningful business workloads integrated with all the rest of the ecosystem that we ship. Job scheduling, the ability to do MapReduce and search and machine learning and streaming processing on the same data securely because the storage layer offers that is absolutely critical for these workloads. Spark is so important to our product and our plans for the market now that we've announced a new initiative called One Platform, a way to combine Spark even more firmly to allow it to take advantage of all of the great services in the Apache Hadoop ecosystem. And that's a broad effort. So supported by the global Apache Spark community. It's been fantastic to see this adoption. What's really happened in the past eight years since we started the company, seven years since we've been doing this conference, is that Hadoop has gone from the HDFS storage engine with the MapReduce analytic engine to a really powerful multi-framework, multi-storage system architecture. Spark, Impala, Search, MapReduce, HBase, HDFS, many ways to store data, many ways to analyze data, all of it integrated with tools like Yarn to handle resource management. It is a much more powerful and flexible system than ever before. And that innovation continues. Just in the last year, we've seen Apache Kafka come on very strong for streaming data ingest, a great open source tool for that. Uh, we've announced the availability of a product called IBIS, application of Python natively to advanced analytic workloads in the ecosystem, also open source. And finally, Intel has recently announced the available, availability of its trusted analytics platform, another open source infrastructure that allows data scientists and developers to build these advanced analytic applications on the platform. Big data is more valuable now because we can work with it in many more ways. We're gonna see that innovation continue. In that vein, this month, this week, we made two major announcements. The platform has been secure for some time. It's been possible to identify a user and to grant or revoke privileges based on the user's identity or the user's role using tools like Apache Sentry, the open source security engine for 
Apache Hadoop ecosystem. The problem is that Sentry requires changes in the analytic engines. Spark has to behave differently, MapReduce has to behave differently, and more importantly, third-party engines that want to join the party. If you want to run the SaaS analytic engine inside your cluster, for example, that code has to change. What we really want is a single lens that looks, lets any user, any analytic framework, look at storage and get a consistent, secure, appropriate view for the user. We've announced this week the Record Service Project. This is work we're doing with some of our financial services clients aimed at vastly simplifying the way that cross framework security happens in this ecosystem. A single data set can be shared with absolutely anyone, and each person only sees the pieces that he or she is allowed. If they're coming in via a tabular interface like Impala, they'll see the right data. If they're coming in via a file-based interface like MapReduce, they'll see the same data. That's a major advance in the state of the art, and we think it's going to make it much easier to put personally identifiable information in the platform. Record service is in beta, not in general production, but we are releasing it through the Apache Software Foundation as a community project. We've had good storage options in Apache Hadoop for years. HDFS was the original Google-style file system, a way to do large streaming data ingest, suck up the entire internet and land it on disk. No engine on the planet harnesses a whole bunch of raw disk and cracks the whip the way that HDFS does. But you know, if you wanted to update some of that data, if you wanted to pull out individual records at random, it really didn't perform well. It wasn't designed for that. Some years ago, the Apache HBase community took that problem on. Michael Stack, J.D. Kryans, the global uh, HBase community created a new NoSQL store on top of the engine that provided those services. For a long time, those have been the two choices available to us, and they're excellent. They do a very good job. If you want to do big data ingest and sort of large sequential reads, HDFS is fantastic. If you want to serve data out in real time, you can't do better than HBase in this big data ecosystem. But neither of those engines solves an important problem for some applications. What if I've got a lot of updates happening, but I want to do very fast, efficient scans? I want to do kind of time series analyses. I want to be able to run analytic, SQL-style relational queries. People have force-fit HDFS have force-fit HBase into those applications with enormous effort and enormous pain. For three years, we've been working on a project at Cloudera that we call Kudu. Kudu fills that gap. It delivers high-performance analytic access to data that is streaming in and rapidly changing. It is fast analytics on fast data. Like record service, this is in beta today, like record service. This will be released through the Apache Software Foundation. This is, we believe, an enormous advance in the storage ecosystem for Hadoop. It doesn't replace HDFS. It doesn't replace HBase. What it does is open new workloads to this big data platform. It fills a gap between those two that we think is going to drive a lot of innovation. We invite the community at large to participate. Now, I want to say again, the software we're shipping is beta. If you're running a production system, do not go home and install it and use it for your systems. But if you'd like to contribute, we'd love to have you. If you're building applications that need these services, you should absolutely experiment with this platform. We're excited now to get some genuine feedback from the world at large. We've been working with a small collection of private beta users for some time. We're excited to open this up more broadly. It promises, we think, a great deal for the ecosystem. I want to close with optimism about the future, but I want to couch it by looking backward for a minute. Doug's backstage. Mike Caffarella, Doug's co-founder of the project, is in San Francisco this week. He can't join us. Ten years ago, the two of them created the Apache Hadoop project, a fantastic thing, a fantastic thing for the ecosystem. And for 10 years, 
This community, writ large around the world, has driven innovation at a pace that's absolutely breathtaking. I'd like to say to the project, I'd like to say to Doug and Mike, congratulations and happy birthday. I'd like to say to all of you, thank you for the innovation that you have driven. A round of applause, please, for Apache Adu. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy the conference today, and I'll look forward to speaking with many of you.